Hey everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So it is the most beautiful day. You'll probably see me in these clothes for a couple videos this week because I am on a roll today. I am getting so much done and I think it's because I don't want to go inside. I want to stay outside. I want to keep planting. So I just keep moving to project to project, which is great because I have a lot of stuff to do. So the next project I'm working on today is my hummingbird project. I don't know if you guys have been watching me for a while, but if you have, you might have heard me talk about my hummingbird saga. <laughs> yes, saga that has been going on. So maybe starting in January, maybe February, every time I would open this garage, open my garage door, a hummingbird would fly into my garage and kind of just like fly around. At first I thought the hummingbird was stuck, but it definitely wasn't stuck. It definitely knew what it was doing. And then I was afraid that the hummingbird was going to make a nest in the garage. It got me really, really nervous. So every time I saw it, I kind of, you know, like kind of shoot it away. And then I thought that I had found a hummingbird nest up here in my crepe myrtle tree, right? I saw a nest, it was way, way, way up there. Turns out that wasn't the nest. That nest was actually an old nest. It actually fell out of the tree and it wasn't it. But I did find the hummingbird nest and I did get a video of the mama hummingbird coming to feed the baby hummingbirds. Let me show you guys, it was the cutest thing. So how I got this video is I actually had the garage doors closed we actually have windows in our garage door. So I just sat there and it took me about 20 minutes sitting there until Mama Hummingbird came back and I got a video of her feeding her babies. And at that time, when I saw that video, I thought it was just one, one baby. And a couple of you said, I see two babies and I didn't believe you. I thought, I thought you guys were seeing things until the Hummingbird babies got a little bit bigger. So let me show you them. Now don't worry, I'm standing pretty far away and I'm on my max zoom on my camera. But can you guys see? There's two hummingbird babies right there. They are making an absolute mess. <laughs> and after they leave the nest, I am definitely gonna have to clean up, but they are just the cutest things. I just cannot believe how cute they are and how cute is it that there are two of them. So the hummingbird nest is actually on my star jasmine. My star jasmine plant, my big one goes from there and then it kind of goes along the eaves. It's actually hooked on wire and it comes all the way there. And the hummingbird nest is about right there. And so the hummingbird nest is resting on my star jasmine. And a couple weeks ago when I found the mama bird and I got the video of the mama bird feeding the baby bird, I sent a call out and I asked you guys to help me name the baby bird. And you guys had so such good names, but the cutest name was Jasmine because it's on Star Jasmine. And they were like, you guys said, name the mama star and the baby Jasmine. And so that was my plan until I saw two of them. And so now my daughters and I and my husband, we've named the babies Star and Jasmine. And baby or mama still doesn't have a name yet, but the two babies are Star and Jasmine. And I just think it's so cute. So thank you to you all. I did not think of that. That was all you. So thank you for suggesting that. So now that I have a family of hummingbirds to care for and to take care of. Can you hear mama bird? <laughs> so I have to take care of them and they, she graced me, mama bird graced me with her nest on my property. I think because I have a lot of hummingbird friendly plants here already. I have a lot of verbenas. I have a lot of salvias. They love my honeysuckle. They're always on my honeysuckle, but I wanted to of course add in a couple more plants that hummingbirds love just for my babies, right? Just for star and jasmine. I had to add that in. So that is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to focus on two plants that are are hummingbird specialties. Hummingbirds absolutely love these plants and of course I'm gonna put them in my garden for my new babies. And here they are in my trusty wagon here. You guys probably knew I was going to pick the Vermillionaire Kufia. This is probably the number one best hummingbird plant you can get for hummingbirds to attract hummingbirds into your garden. This is called Kufia. Sometimes it is called the hummingbird plant. 
This plant does like full sun. So I am finding a spot in my garden where it is going to get bright full sun because that is how it's going to thrive. It gets about two feet tall and two feet wide. Yellow orange flowers. You guys can kind of see those right there. This plant loves heat. It absolutely loves heat. So it's, I mean, I know it's going to thrive in my garden because we have tons of heat. It's also drought tolerant. So I think this is a perfect plant. I'm excited about it and I'm excited for the hummingbirds to find it because I think they're going to be happy that I'm planting this plant. Then after that, we have one of my favorite and I don't have any in bloom right now. And when, when these were delivered to me, I had one that was in total bloom and it looked so pretty, but it faded out. This is my sun star lavender pentis. So last year I grew sun star pink pentis and it was absolutely beautiful. Pentis is such a fantastic plant. It attracts bees, it attracts butterflies, and it attracts hummingbirds. This one is part sun to sun. I am putting it in a spot. I'll show you guys. I'm putting it over by my Eden Rose Arch at the bottom of it because that is going to get morning sun and it's actually going to be protected from the hot afternoon sun. So I think that will be perfect for my area. Uh, sun star pentis are known for having absolutely massive bloom heads that almost mimic hydrangeas. Yes, almost, I said that, almost mimic hydrangeas. So here where we are so hot, we really can't have hydrangeas in the sun. We really can't have hydrangeas in the shade, certain types of hydrangeas. So this is a good, uh, you know, instead of, this is a good exception to that, that it's gonna have that hydrangea look with the big bloom heads, but it's gonna be able to handle our heat, which I'm really excited about. 18 to 22 inches tall, 16 inches to two feet wide. And again, bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds love it. So I think the hummingbird babies will enjoy this one as well. So along with the vermilionaire kufia and the sunstar pentis, I have so many hummingbird friendly plants in my garden, but one that I specifically want to show you that is actually an old plant to me. I know you guys have heard me talk about this, but I just had to point it out. Let me turn the camera around so you can see it a little bit better. This plant right here, it doesn't look like anything right now. This is called rockin' fuchsia salvia. This plant, oh my goodness, you guys, I got it for a dollar off of the clearance rack at Lowe's. I didn't know any better. I brought it home. I planted it. It was one of the very first plants I planted in my garden and I have not taken care of it. I haven't done a thing every year. I chop it back all the way down to the ground and it just keeps coming back for me. I, I just, it's just an amazing plant. The hummingbirds I have seen with my own eyes, they feast on this plant. The shape of the flowers, the shape of the blooms are absolutely perfect for the hummingbirds mouth, beak, whatever you want to say. And I see them on this plant absolutely all the time. So if you guys are looking for hummingbird attractor plants, not only think about the pentis, think about the kufia, but also think about the rock and fuchsia salvia. I don't know if it's the color or if it's the taste of this plant, but my hummingbirds love this plant. And I really think there's something to say about it because there's the plant right there. And then if we just come this way, there's the nest. So mama chose to do the nest so close to this plant and I do not think that was on accident. I think she did that on purpose. All right, let's get these hummingbird friendly plants planted.
So that was pretty easy. It was only about nine plants. I put six of the Sunstar Lavender Pentis right over here by this Kinsman Arch that I am growing my Eden Climbers on. I am so excited because I actually have buds on this. So I can't wait. I am so, I just, ugh, it's spring, you guys. It's so exciting. And then I planted three more of the Vermilion Air Kufia a little bit closer to the nest kind of way back here, kind of in this area by my stepping stone pathway. So that'll be nice and close to the babies to start in Jasmine. And then once they start to expand out, they'll have the Pentis over here. You can see how my brain is going with this. I, I love these babies. <laughs> I want them to be happy and I want them to make their nests next year on my property again. So here's a little closer look at the Pentis. You can see I have my roses here roses here and then I just kind of circled them. I did one there. I know the shadow and sun is makes it kind of hard but one there, one there, and one up there and then over on this side I did one, two, and three right there. So my thought is is that the roses, the Eden climbers will have little balls of lavender right underneath them and I think that will be so pretty and I think the Pentis will be really really happy there. And then coming up here just real quick to show you guys I have the Kufia. Yes I was weeding and I forgot to pick it up. I'm gonna do that as soon as I stop <laughs> filming. I have the Kufia here I have another one here, and then I have another one over here. And that is planted right in front of this Superbina Whiteout. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Superbina Whiteout. This guy has been here, oh my goodness, for so long, and I keep thinking it's gonna die out, and then it just keeps coming back, just like the rock and fuchsia over there. Um, so it is starting to bloom out. I'm really excited. It does have some woody parts kind of deep down in there, but I'll see how it does. And my plan is to keep it cut back so it doesn't encroach on the vermilionaire right there. All right, you guys, so that is gonna be it for today. These are my hummingbird-friendly plants, and I do have to tell you if you check anywhere like there are so many hummingbird friendly plants you just have to kind of pick one of them and then I just pay attention and I see what my hummingbirds like one at um I don't th I think I took it out last year I had a plant called verbena de la mina and that plant was absolutely gorgeous it was so beautiful and I would see swallowtail butterflies on it the bees are all over it and I saw the hummingbirds on that plant as well so that's another really really good one I ended up having to take mine out because it got really woody on the inside I do think that there were some cats marking their territory on that as well. So I think that was part of the problem with that plant now that I think back on it. But anyway, if you can get your hands on that plant, that's a really good drought tolerant, heat tolerant plant along with these guys here, the Vermilion Aracufia and the Sunstar Lavender Pentis. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today. Mm -hmm.